hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ed J and today we have a special guest with us this is Osla of Osla Sport please introduce yourself hi guys <laughs> um, my name is Osla from Osla Sport yes some of you may recognize her from the question I put out a few days ago okay yeah. so I put a post on my community where I asked you guys to ask all your health and well-being questions. questions and everything Osla is a pharmacist yeah and she has like a vast knowledge on everything health and well-being and all that so yes um, this is a collaboration that means we also have a video on her channel yes so you Osla guys should see watch my video yes I'm going to link it in the description box below you guys Osla is just like a hundred subscribers shy of the 1000 subscriber yeah, like 100 remaining 100, 100 and, right 100 and or so. Please, you guys, we are begging. Also, I beg. To my please YouTube subscribe channel. to her please. channel. Let's get her to that please. one thousand. Please, Thank please, you please. She's, in advance. Why yeah, you do that? she's beautiful. She's a pharmacist. She's smart. This is like the whole package, come and you subscribe. guys. And you really enjoy her videos. I promise. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, once you're done with this video of course you can move over to her channel and watch our video there as well we have a really fun video on her channel so yeah, yeah without wasting much of your time you guys let's just kick off okay let's just get to answering the questions okay I still want to say uh, thank you so much to everyone who sent in their questions. You yeah, guys I appreciate are that. Thank you so much. So yeah, let's just move on. Okay. So yeah, first question. Okay, so um, I've been trying to use hibiscus drink, that's Zobo, yeah. without sugar, to reduce my appetite, and it works. And it works. However, I noticed that it affects my menstrual cycle. I wanted to recommend it to a friend, but she's trying to conceive. Is it advisable for her to take it? If not, what natural stuff can she use instead? Hmm. Okay, First so of all, answer, do you think it's advisable for someone trying to conceive to take Zobo? No, even if maybe you love Zobo so much, I feel like you shouldn't take it so so much. You can mm -hmm. just you know watch how you take it, but it's mm -hmm. not good. Zobo, normally, what I know about Zobo, if you take Zobo, you notice that you're going to purge a lot. Yes, you will purge, and it's not like your purge, whatever your purging is like black. Mm -hmm. I notice it. True. It's like your purging. Like it takes the color of it's, Zobo somehow. It's a serious mm -hmm. detox. Mm -hmm. Zobo is a serious detox, and yeah. if you're not careful, um, you're trying to conceive. You want to wash away the thing that's supposed to enter mm -hmm. your, your systems. I don't think it's advisable yeah. at all for you to be taking Zobo constantly. So is there a natural drink or fruit you uh, recommend for someone trying to conceive? You know how they say some things help the men? Are there things that help the women as well? Yes, okra. I don't know if okra is, oh, okra is a vegetable. But. Yes. So let me tell you people how they do it. So you get a cup of water. Mm -hmm. The way I'm saying this, I have I've conceived it. <laughs> no, we need the knowledge too. So you get a cup of water. Yes. Let's say one cup of water. Then you cut your okra into. You can just get like few pieces of okra. You cut yeah. it into small, small bits. Then you put the okra inside the water. You leave it overnight. Okay. So in the morning you drain it <laughs> out. <laughs> so so I was supposed to drink the water. Yeah. Oh, that was so slimy. But you eat okra soup now. Yes. Now that one is different. It's delicious. So you drink the water. Oh, wow. So what it does is that it will make. Like that place to be very, like okay, catch up. It to be moving, catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. Okay. So okra, oh. when you know you want to, and it works for some people. I've seen ah, people that. I will try I even saw it on TikTok as well. For real. I saw it on TikTok where one woman I was like, ah, so this is actually true. Because really, uh, hmm. if you cut the okra and you leave it in the water, yes. so the water will be very slimy. slimy. So you take it. You would be, you know, very mm -hmm. slimy. Oh, oh, <laughs> so you oh. you be slimy. So when when mm, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> when the sperm is going in it's like going straight like you know the, the sliminess of the whole mm. place will just shoot the sperm right Amazing. to the right place so you have you know better chances of Amazing. conceiving mm. yes yeah, so you can try okra and water <laughs> okay and drink the water okay just close your mind conceiving <laughs> is more important than the exactly, test of the okra exactly. so you can just close your mind and then exactly. you drink the okra water okay. uh, please can you shed light on ovarian cysts and is there any drug to take to remove it and does it cause infertility? Okay, so first of all, um, ovarian cyst is the cyst that you find um, around your ovary. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you guys know what cyst is, but cyst is more like a pocket that is filled up with fluids and mm -hmm. you know, it could be solids, it could be anything. So first of all, your doctor would have to just determine what kind of cyst that you have. Mm -hmm. um, they won't just go straight into the treatment of the mm -hmm. cyst, so they will check what kind of cyst you have. If it's a small cyst or a big cyst, and then they will just like examine you and mm -hmm. watch 
because most times the cyst will come and go. Okay. So if it doesn't go, that's when the doctor will now um, tell you to take some medications, and they are mostly hormonal oh. medications that they will ask you to take. So it's not in every case that they will now ask you to um, do an operation oh, or so something. So surgery is not always the no surgery is not solution. always the solution. It's only when it's persistent and it's not going okay. and it's causing you know some other issues okay. like other symptoms, okay. and when it's going to now lead to like PCOS, okay. that's when they will now suggest that okay. they will take out the cyst, okay. yeah, or take out the ovary, that particular ovary okay. that has the cyst. Then okay. you can now use the other ovary. Oh, and it has to. It's you always find ovarian cyst in the ovary. Yes, it's in the ovaries. Oh, okay. So if if one ovary has this, they'll just take out that ovary. Okay. But, yeah, that but would when be it's now difficult for you to conceive. Yeah, but then there are now other options that you can now consider that okay. will make you to be more fertile, okay. and then you can now be able to okay. conceive. Okay. Next question, please. How can we lose weight? Tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to lose weight, um, you have to watch what you're eating. That's the most important thing. Okay. But then it's not all about because some people add weight and it's not like they're eating too much yes, anything. it's true. just how their body is yeah. so i feel you have to check you know your calorie um, um content or whatever it is that you're yeah. eating don't eat like at night very late in the night and then mm -hmm. if i'm going to give any tip and trick for losing weight um i would say you should try to do a lot of juicing Ooh. Yeah, you should do a lot of juicing. If you can do it like, things, like you're, it's you're not you're not full. It's like eh. you're drinking water. But if you're enjoying it, like if you take juice morning and that. in the night, okay. uh, somehow somehow like you feel up. It's just something you have to like train your own mind. Okay. It's not easy. You it's not an easy thing. Effort. Yeah, you have to put in a very conscious effort. But then, other than that, I sell weight loss products. Yes, she does. Weight, some of yeah, you know and, this. Um, I've used her product twice. Yeah, twice I personally I always take my products yeah. because if I don't, if I'm not careful, I'll just blow. My yeah. mom is very, oh, she's not very big, but she sees this. <laughs> but I mean, if you're finding it very hard to lose weight, yeah. you could use my product. You could check yeah. loose fat underscore. I'll put all the details in the description then box. You can now combine it with whatever it is that you want. It's yeah. going to help you. Yeah, very positive I've about used her product twice, so yeah, it's yeah. a 100%. Go ahead. Okay, okay third question. Should I be worried if my left breast keeps itching? <laughs> okay, so if your left breast is itching you, first of all, I think you should try to give yourself time. Like you take note to know, is it like, what part of your breast is itching you? Is it your nipple? Is it your whole breast? Like which area is itching you? Then if you notice that maybe the itching is becoming too intense, yeah. and then maybe it's reddish and yeah. it's, you're having some pain then oh, that's when you can now yeah that's when you can now go and see your doctor and yeah. a dermatologist because okay. it could be a skin issue okay. that yeah. maybe the skin around True. the breast is itching you that's True. why okay so yeah that makes sense the person should be a little bit worried but the person should not go and browse the symptoms because <laughs> no, no, browse the symptoms yeah, <laughs> you'll see something else <laughs> browse symptoms, yeah. but yeah you'll see something else uh, for a ttc that's trying to conceive how good is COVID? okay for a TTC, yeah. someone that's trying to take Clomid first of all, I feel that's because you're having infertility um, yeah. problems, like you, you're finding it very hard to conceive. So if mm -hmm. you're taking Clomid, Clomid is like 80% very effective oh. in most women. Yeah, it's oh, very wow. effective and the the side effect and you know the after effects, it's very, very low. It's oh. rare. You, you not really see people having you know okay. bad effects with the Clomid, but it's just that you don't take it for a long time. Okay. Yeah, you just take it for a period of the clone is like you're taking every day for five days. The doc okay. your doctor will just be the one to know what works best for so you. But don't take it for long. And then the yes. And when you're taking clomid, you must have a doctor that is like, you know, following you yeah. up. And then as you're taking the clomid, you have to be having sex mm -hmm. every day because you're trying to conceive. So yeah. that period you have to, you know, do yeah. all you have to do. The the essence of taking clomid is to induce ovulation. Okay. Because if you ovulate okay. then that way you can be able to conceive. Okay. So most people take the clomid so that at least your ovaries will produce. Yeah, but then eggs. there's this um, thing about that we've all heard about clomid, you know, how yeah, it will help you produce much multiple eggs and yeah. all that. So but that if it's not monitored, like if, if your doctor does not monitor you, you may end up getting pregnant and you know, have having six kids or ten or something. Yeah, you know, that's months. like it's just a ten percent chance. That's okay. a side effect actually. Oh. That's multiple. Yeah. But people are now, you know, people take clomid. Some people take clomid for the wrong reason. They take it because they want to have twins yeah. more than one exactly. child at the same time. But that's, that's mostly what we if you're taking clomid from. because you want to have more than one, then you might it's ten percent chance. That means ten out of hundred okay. would get that multiple. Oh, get and that's the side effect. It's not the essence of using the clomid. Okay. And they shouldn't <laughs> take clomid too much because it can cause 
um, ovarian cancer. Yeah, yeah, true. If you take it too much. Oh, wow. So if Glomid is not working for you, your doctor would now put you on something, something else. Something else, true. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. All right, so yeah. <laughs> How can an unmarried woman know she's infertile when she regularly has her period and has never tried taking it? So the first thing is that this question is very funny. How would you know you can you're infertile without yeah, trying to take exactly. in? So if you want to test yourself, you should take in. Yeah, because exactly. how do you know? True. The person is seeing the person's period every true. month. Your true. period is okay. Yeah. And you just feel it's like you're you're infertile. You're infertile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find I feel like women way. just have small issues. We always like thinking, you know, very yeah. far that maybe we are infertile. Yeah. But the thing is that for this person to be asking, maybe there might be a history, family history yeah. with you know infertility, even even with the fact that their period is yeah, very normal. True. So if you're above um, 35 years and you feel you feel you might be infertile due to some certain reasons mm -hmm. or something is happening to you yeah. and you feel you might be infertile, then and you're always having sex all the time yeah. and you're above 35, then you can discuss with your doctor, doctor yeah. to know you know if there's any problem and then i think people should also try to normalize going for yeah, checkups yeah, as well yeah you even, can go for yeah, all this check your yeah. ovaries yeah, check your uterus should. and your very, pelvic very region important mm, okay. Very good. okay this i think this is actually an interesting question okay. um is it safe to do food detox and food fast while breastfeed, breastfeeding while breastfeeding well um for me i think it's not that safe everybody might have their own opinion yeah. but for me i don't think it's that safe to just do that because it needs something that would give your child more breast milk mm -hmm. so just that doing sense. just that no, no, no. you need to eat something so that you know be able to produce good breast milk for your yeah. child you don't True. want to give your child fruit <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll no, say yeah. the child might keep getting um diarrhea and yes all so i don't think that's advisable okay yeah mm. for me yeah okay I like this one too. Okay. Um, do you think or believe that local Uda and Uzuza are good medicine for bloating as well as good natural contraceptives? Hmm. Local, I've never heard about them being a uh, form of contraception. Sure. I've not heard, but I they know are that good women, for bloating. I know yeah, that part. women that just put to bed, you know, I know they, they take it a lot to cleanse. Things. It's yes. like, I, I feel it's more of a detox. Yeah, but I don't think it's a, a natural but detox. I think it can cause um, discourage. Just, just that when anything that is like cleansing, if you're not careful, depending yeah. on the content and the concentration, yeah. it could flush out. Yes, so exactly. that's maybe that might just be the misconception. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen, but people shouldn't take it maybe because they want to make sure they cleanse whatever mm -hmm, they formed mm -hmm, in your body mm -hmm, true. yeah but for the bloating yeah, yeah it will help because so far as you're being detoxified you're reducing yeah. bloating okay so what is the best way to combat stomach fat ah, best way to combat very important to that one too the best, best way to combat stomach is there any best way to ah, combat is that the best way like see <laughs> best way is to go and use loose fat on the <laughs> product but jokes apart if you can just try you have to to lose weight is very hard yes very very hard and you have to make an effort to True. help yourself no True. matter what it is even if you're using my product i always tell people because it's always good to be honest yes. using the product alone would give you you know like good results but then you have to make an effort to help yourself as well to yeah. lose weight and then your tummy if you're eating if you're taking something to lose weight and you're still eating late at night very yeah. well and all of that i my mean people, it's going somewhere my people late night <laughs> it's going somewhere <laughs> but i feel like for me um i have an app on my phone okay so i feel somehow somehow i program myself not to okay. eat at a particular that's, certain time i'll wonderful. just stop yeah i'm just trying Do you to bed on time no, I do exactly. not. Exactly. That's the I problem. Because I don't go to bed on time and then I get hungry by 11 p.m. Uh, no, Maybe I, I ate not. by 4 p.m. I'm like, oh, I that's my last meal for the day. I and then by 11 p.m. I'm hungry. But whenever I'm, it's whenever, if I feel my appetite is becoming very yeah. wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> what I do is I take my pills. If I take okay. the pill, I won't really feel okay, so true. hungry. Even if my best food is in front of me. Oh, I might not I see, my problem is not that I am hungry. Oh, sir. I'm like you just want to test something. I just <laughs> want to put something in my mouth. I'm not, I know I'm not hungry. All right. So this question, this person asked two questions. Okay. Let's start with the first one. Okay. Is it good to be taking post pills to prevent pregnancy, and how does it affect your fertility later in life? So it's not good. Number one, it's not good to take it to prevent pregnancy, mm -hmm. like so often. You can take it as like you know just to emergency. if you're not sure. Em these things are emergency, emergency pills. Yes. It's not. It's not a birth control yeah, pill. Yeah, yeah. So see. if you want to control your birth, like if you don't want to conceive and all, then you now go strictly for birth control pills. True. And there are like several birth true, control pills. True. And then you discuss with your doctor. True. So those ones, you can know how to regulate, you know, conceiving. But yeah. post pill, post not too. Mm -hmm. 
They call it for me. Yes, emergency, but there are people that abuse it a lot. True. Um, you know, I know someone that used to take it every day. I was day. just they even about that. to come soon. <laughs> Post pill every day. Every day. They didn't know that it's once, you know, your menstrual cycle this every day. Hmm, no, no, no. Really, no, people no. are that ignorant. No. A lot of people don't know these things. It's back control pills that they take like every day. They, no. do, they, they don't know. Like, they feel like once you do that thing, you drink it. Once you do that thing, no. you drink it. Ah, because so they could take it three times a week, four times a week. I, I, my own understanding is that I. Most of these um, hormonal drugs, mm -hmm. they can affect, like they can mess true. up your system true, a lot. And true. it's not all of them that is excreted out. True. Some of them, they leave like small, small. So if you're taking it, small, small particles in your system, mm -hmm. if you're taking it every time, like so frequently, then you see that it could even lead to cancer later on in your life. life. And then in some cases, infertility. So if you feel you want to be doing something every time like that, <laughs> people just, you know, there are other things to do, like using condom, you can... Pull out, you can <laughs> do anything. <laughs> so, another thing is that people don't really know that there's a difference between emergency pills yes, and, and you no, know, there's a very big emergency um, um, pills like examples are post pill, post you know, mm -hmm. two. These are like two common emergency yeah. pills in Nigeria here. Yeah. But um, bed pills and um, bed control pills, example is combination three. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, I've forgotten this other name <laughs> that has 21, 21 pills, pills and then those are the ones that are yeah. best control pills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if you want to know more, so just please don't, take it, don't be taking it too much. <laughs> okay, the follow-up question. Mm. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about drinking water. Does drinking water help you lose or gain weight? I'm interested in this question. <laughs> Okay, so I'm giving you my own opinion mm. because people have different opinion when it comes to that particular yeah. question. For some people, it helps. For some people, it doesn't help. Mm. So I think the main factor is the person involved. Okay. For you, you might be taking a lot of water. You see that it's helping you with, you know, instead of taking water, mm. instead of taking like, um, let's say, all these soft drinks yeah. and all those, you know, sugar, sugar mm. drinks, then you can take water instead. Okay. Yeah, but it's not like um, drinking water is going to actually help you to lose okay. weight per se. Drink water is just healthy. It's not like it will really So why do they tell weight? us that when we're losing weight, we should drink a lot of water? And yeah. you so that you that wouldn't be, I was using your Yes, product. because the product will make you very thirsty. Okay. So instead of you to take something else, some people might want to quench their thirst with okay. something else. Okay. Some people might want to take alcohol okay. to quench okay. their okay. thirst. Okay. But drinking water is better because it's healthy. It okay. keeps you more, you know, nourished. Okay. Yeah, not like it will really help you to okay. lose the weight. Okay. But it For some people, you gain weight as well. Because it could, of water, weight, and it all could because some people. Maybe it could lead to bloating. A lot of, okay. a lot of many things happen in people's body. So yeah. as I said, it depends on your body. Okay, okay, okay. I like this one because mm. this one, gosh, it stresses me out. Okay. Um, in your opinion, what's the best cough and cold medicine for kids? Because it seems like the ones we have now don't work, and it's so frustrating. I agree. Okay. So frustrating. Like we've tried so many. Okay. Okay. So you personally, like, um, which one do you think people have tried and it doesn't really work? A lot them? of them. Everything. All the Benelin products. I'm yeah. sorry to say. But you know the point is that when there was Benelin we could in, at least for adults. Before they withdrew it, it, it was, was wonderful. So the thing is, um, one thing is that people don't know the type of. I feel like some people don't know the type of cough, cough they have. They have. They'll just come to the pharmacy. I want. They know what they want to buy mm -hmm. without telling you what the problem mm -hmm. is. So I feel like if your have if your child has cough. You as the parent, the mother or the father, whoever, should first of all try to know whether it's a productive cough, cough exactly. Then, even if, if it's something that if it's a productive cough, mm -hmm. I feel like if it has if it has a color, mm -hmm. you should also try to know. So when you get to the pharmacy or wherever you're buying your mm -hmm. drug from, you tell the person this is what your child is having, so that, that they'll be the work. best. In your opinion, okay, mm, for me. In your opinion, what's the because best if for somebody, when it comes to children, yes, children. Mm, I prefer using um, Covonia. Okay. I don't know if you know Covonia products. Okay, I don't and why I prefer using them is because they contain lemon. Okay. They also contain um, honey in it. Okay. And it's like natural stuff. Whenever Actually, I use Covonia. In my own experience, uh, any uh, costume that has honey and lemon, it doesn't do anything. Really? I'm no, for me, for me though, it yeah. really works. Covonia, then sometimes you can add antibiotics to it. Some specific There's a question here yeah, actually. With antibiotics. Yeah, yes. The person asked, um, do, do antibiotics, like do they cure coughs or they don't? Because some people tell you that it's a waste of time to take antibiotics when you have coughs. But then when you go to the pharmacy sometimes, they tell them you have coughs, they give you antibiotics. Sometimes. Some people give people the wrong antibiotics. I don't know, I'm just saying like for my, because yeah. you might go to a different pharmacy, someone else will tell you something else. Yeah. But for me, if someone has cough and is productive, I only, that's when I would it tell you to, yes. And then also when it has a color, like 
you know, it could be productive, it could be clear. Yes. It could be productive, it might be yeah, yellow or greenish. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So once once it's like that, then there's an infection. So for me, the the right people take antibiotics for the wrong thing because yeah. maybe if they're having malaria, they'll take a particular, mm-hmm. they'll use augmentin. Mm-hmm. For example, they're having malaria, they'll use augmentin. Mm-hmm. If they're having cough, they'll go back to augmentin yeah, again. So your body's already getting yeah. used to. Yeah. That's why most antibiotics do not work. Whereas they are like very recent antibiotics okay. these days. Okay. So if you have cough, I would advise you, the antibiotic you can use could be erythromycin yeah. and then azithromycin. azithromycin For me, the this is, yes, describe. yeah, but just because azithromycin can be quite expensive, so erythromycin yeah. is more cost effective okay. for some people. Okay. And then also, people, they'll tell you take something for a particular period of time. So you take it and once you think it's like yeah, it has gone, that's mistake. then you now come back and that. say exactly. the drug did not work. They don't take the food. Yeah, so that's, if, if they tell you take something for five days, for ten days, finish it, even if it has stopped. Yes, because true. that way it will not come back again. True. So that's true. why most antibiotics, because you can't be taking something somehow and then you expect true. it that's to work right. again when you take it. That's right. Your body that's is right. fighting those drugs. That's right. Um, okay, so let's just take a few more questions. Mm. Okay, someone here says um, you should talk about secondary infertility. Okay, so for so many people, I feel they might not even know what secondary infertility yes. means. So secondary infertility, in a very simple way, means like when you've previously been able to put to bed, you've conceived, yes. if you've given birth to a child before, then you find it very hard to give birth to a child again. And that could be based on so many you know, reasons. Mm. And the reason could come from you as the woman, the reason could come from the man himself. So people have secondary infertility. Maybe the man is not producing enough sperm. Yeah. You know, maybe the sperm is producing is not so good enough. Yeah. Maybe it has low sperm counts. Yeah. And they might not know they'll be blaming the woman. Yeah. And yeah. then another thing is that why some people have secondary infertility as well is because of maybe they had a complication when they were okay, giving they birth that. previously. Maybe they'll tell you not to do some certain things and you will not listen and okay. you want to go by what you want. Okay. And those complications will not make you, you won't be able to put to bed again. So if you're having okay. secondary infertility, I feel like you should have your doctor help you. Yeah. So you could try out like other options that you can yeah. be able to put to bed. And you need to also discuss with your partner as yeah. well, your husband as a woman. You discuss with your husband very well because it can be very stressful. True. Yeah. So if you talk with him and then you guys have someone that is just helping you through, I'm sure you yeah. find a way to, you know. Yeah conceive again <laughs> okay so what is the uh, best prescribed drug let's just ask know what's the best way to fibroid. take care of fibroid yeah, exactly. so when it comes to treating fibroid uh um your doctor well i'm mentioning doctor doctor because most of yeah. these issues true it's not people just differ and white, yeah. yeah what the way something is happening i can't god forbid no Person A <laughs> can be having fibroid and person B can be having fibroid and they have different types of fibroid yeah. and different sizes. So first yeah. of all, your doctor will check like the size of your fibroid. Is this something that is able well. yeah, where it says mm-hmm. you can have fibroid that is in your uterus and yeah. then you can have fibroid that is outside. Well, yeah. So when you have fibroid that is in your uterus, that's when you might have to consider a surgery to yeah. take it out. There yeah. are some surgeries you do, you take out the uterus. That's if you want to, like mostly the people that consider that are people that have already given birth. Then also, other than that, people that also consider that are people that maybe the doctor suspects that there's a cancerous yes, um, of course. Um, cyst yes, there, so they will tell you to take, take it, it out. out. Yeah, yeah, so but normally way. if it's a f- for fibroid, you know, there's really like she said, you can't really say. Some people have a lot of things that like they say. Oh, if you do keto, it will shrink your fibroid. Or if you take this product, you know, there are a lot of products out there that are really lot, of shrinking fibroids and all that. But they will shrink the fibroid really tell, actually. They have will you shrink seen the, that used it. The ones I know, they people take like for example. If I want a doctor, I wouldn't tell you to take is even a hormonal drug yeah, that will help with your fertility. And usually birth control. Yes, drugs. and their yeah. birth control that will help with your fertility, but not drugs. I feel people there's this um, new um, technology which is like um, ultrasound. They yeah. call it high intensity okay, ultrasound. Yeah. So that way you can just go through an ultrasound and, and then it. yeah. But it's not easy. It's but not. It's not but the then, option. That one. is not always like open surgery is not always the uh, op- um, yeah. best option. It's not always the case. You know, some people can actually do a laparoscopic <laughs> myomectomy. Yeah. yeah, and then you won't have to get, you know, a cut. And, but it depends on the size and... It depends on your fibroids. condition. Yeah, exactly. So you can't really say. Yeah. But I feel like that um, ultrasound on, it's yeah. not bad. If you just go to a specialist hospital... It also depends on the size. I don't think they can do yes. a really large fibroid. They True. just actually to do surgery. True. True. Yeah. But that ultrasound on, it's, it's quite safe. No, yeah, but very no expensive. Blood the safer it is, the more expensive. Because the it problem is. with surgery is that it could lead to blood 
and yeah. plotting so which is not good for you yeah. but with the ultrasound for me because i know someone that did that and yeah. i was like it was a better option yeah. so you just go they'll just you know do the ultrasound no blood clots nothing and you can yeah. be able to even preserve your uterus better yeah, okay that's nice okay um what drugs can you get for a one-year-old baby girl who always itches her vagina okay i have checked and there is nothing like a rash there please i need help okay so um first of all mm -hmm. I feel number one, the first thing you have to do is proper hygiene for your child. Yeah. It's very, very bad that a one year old child would be itching her vagina mm -hmm. all the time. So I think you have to, you know, do a lot of proper hygiene and then you have to change, you know, the products that yeah. your child is using. Yeah. So I, I can recommend using Sebamed products. Mm -hmm. They are very, very, very nice. Like doctors recommend it a yeah. lot. And what it's very would you good. Um for diapers. Mm, I don't really have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of the diapers. I don't really have an idea, but I mean, Pampas. I'm not put to bed. I don't know. Pampas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they have oh, nice please. diapers. Then also, if it's something that is like persistent, I think you just go for a test, run a lab true. test, so they can find out if there's a particular organism that yeah, is causing true. it. Then you can put your child, you know, with medications that true. could help. Yeah. All right. So um, I was told migraine comes with the blood group O. I don't know how true it is, but I have been experiencing it from childbirth to your adulthood. Is that is it true? It's not true. <laughs> um, um, what I'm saying is not true. Is that I'm B positive, yeah. and I've always had migraines. Yeah. So I don't see anything that has to do with the blood group for yeah. migraines. I think migraines could be more of like something that is hereditary. Okay. It, if I, it depends for me, what I'm saying is hereditary because my mom used to have migraines okay. so whenever when i noticed i'm always having migraines that kind of headache i have okay. i asked my mom and she was like she also has it so maybe i got okay. it from her okay. so if you're always having migraines i think you should try to use uh, a specific type of you know painkiller yeah. that is different from the normal okay. painkillers example is cafe guts yes, it would help guts. a lot it will help but don't take it for too long yeah. and then most times you have migraine once you just sleep and you wake up and you rest it's yeah. gone <sighs> my migraines they sometimes stopped. it gets worse so after you sleep safe and then so most most times people have migraines and headache because there's something causing it oh, so you can be true. having headache for no reason true. so that means maybe you're having a particular problem and that yeah, is a symptom yeah. showing you oh, so sometimes true. you can even go and check yourself true, true. But yeah, i think right. in all of these things people should just try to cultivate um like regular checkups regular, all the yeah. time you should try to cultivate regular checkups okay. if there's any problem somehow somehow you find out okay how can i get rid of constant yeast infection i experience these infections and painful sensations every month hmm. and also what is the best solution to reoccurring staphylococcus hmm. person every month person this yeast infection and painful yeah sensations. maybe she doesn't take the full dose of her antibiotics and drugs and, and then some people like most times like someone can come to you now mm -hmm. and be like oh i have this problem you you know prescribe something yeah. different for the person will come to me i'll prescribe something yeah, different true. some people do not really help you know people as much as I feel like once you notice that this person that has reoccurring you know painful mm -hmm. sensation and all of that I feel go for, like the first things first go for, go a, for test. a test because if you go for a test this yeast infection there are so many yeast infections you don't know the organism causing the True. infection so if you go for a test you can even be able to know the particular organism that is causing yeah. it yeah. and then how much of that organism is in your body yeah true because sometimes you see that the organism is, you know, it's like living there, True. you know, sleeping True. and enjoying itself mm -hmm. in your body. Vacation. Yeah, so you have to actually take your medication. It's, it's basically just antibiotics. Yeah. I feel like the best way is even to use um, IV antibiotics. All of them, self. But, but you have to take it for like, I feel like, let's say, you take it for the right dose of yeah, time. For the, yes. And then, it's like for me, if I'm treating someone that has um, a yeast infection or staff or whatever, mm -hmm. What I do is, is like the person will start with infusion. You can take all these um, doxycycline okay. infusion. Then once you're done with the infusion, we we'll switch to tablets, tablets as well. Yeah. So yeah. most this time most people just abuse these antibiotics, yeah. so they, they don't, don't now work again. Nigeria, we abuse and they'll tell you take now. something for a particular period of once time. You, feel you just feel like it's not itching you again. No pain for you. Stop. Yeah. True. And it will come, but when it comes back, it will be hard It'll to go more. back True. again. That's why they will call. Okay. So let's take our last question. Okay. Okay, so. so yeah, in your opinion, what's the best way to tackle insomnia? Okay, so for me, I suffer from insomnia. I'm still suffering from insomnia. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've not tackled it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've not tackled it yet at all. You know, like the time doesn't work for me. It doesn't, but um, I think there's a plan 
five milligram can work, but it's something you have to get a prescription for. Yes. If I try to like take diazepam, I think what I do is I'll just try to lie down. Oh, somehow, okay. somehow the sleep would come. But you see, Lexotan, Bromazepam. You know the funny thing? The thing works best for me. Oh, then there's this paracetamol that works. Oh, Panadonite. Yeah. Oh. For yeah. me, oh, if I take one, I will sleep. It's not like I'll feel sleepy, but if I lie down yeah. and I call sleepy, it will <laughs> but all this, for some people, you, you see them, they, they take Lexotan, they say it works for them. Yeah. Or, like, oh, I don't know. It people, some people system, they are very strong, yeah, so all those true. things, they don't work. You can take alcohol, you see. <laughs> okay, so yes, guys, I think, gosh, this video, oh my gosh, it's already so long. I think yeah. this, uh, the questions we're able to, we'll be able to take for today. Maybe yeah. another day, maybe if you give us your time, you know how busy you are. I will, definitely. <laughs> so yes, guys, let's say thank you so much to Ursula yeah. once again. And thank you guys for watching thank this you, video. Thank you, thank you so much. You. Remember, so we have a video on Ursula's channel. Yeah, and you guys should check it out. A very yes, interesting video. Very, very, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> and I'm going to put a link in, my descri in the description box of this video. Please, you guys, Ursula is just like 104 subscribers short of 1000 please 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 subscribe to her channel let's just yeah. get her to 1000 and know yeah. she's you know working hard for the watch hour right now okay yeah. you guys thank you once again thank for watching you so this much video. and i hope we answered your questions yeah, I hope we answered. You know, to the best of our knowledge yeah exactly thank you again to everyone who sent in their questions yeah. okay yeah please don't forget to like comment share and of course subscribe to our channels yes we're please. going to see you on us last channel all right bye, bye.